Hey, welcome to Park Notes. I'm Parker Sedecase. I'm a philosopher and theologian, and this is a channel where I help you study and think more deeply. In this video, I'm going to share with you seven tips that I've learned throughout my studies on how to actually remember what you've read. Over the past 11 semesters, I've earned three master's degrees. I host two podcasts and have a couple other YouTube channels where I discuss big philosophical ideas. So when I read a book, it's really important for me to remember the information, to conceptualize the ideas in order to like make that my own and pass that along to you guys. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys these seven tips that actually help me remember what I've read. Some of these I've kind of made up on my own. Others I've picked up from other people and other thinkers, and they're all super helpful for me. You don't have to use all seven of these. And just a fair warning, they're going to be super duper notebook heavy. This is the Park Notes YouTube channel. I'm pretty much obsessed with notebooks. I love compartmentalizing my ideas my thoughts, my information in different notebooks. It's super helpful for me. So you can take one or two or all seven of these ideas. You don't have to use any of them. You can start a notebook hoarding collection like me, or you don't have to. But if you are gonna pick up some new notebooks, then check the links in the description because a lot of them have discounts. If I can find you guys a deal, I'm gonna do that. So I found you guys a couple deals. Check out my affiliate links in the description. That's all I'll say about that. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, but more on that later. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first tool to help you actually remember what you read is marginalia. Now, marginalia is just a big fancy word for marginal notes or annotations. I'm talking about writing in your books, taking actual notes inside your books. Now, I've done a whole video on taking marginal notes. You can find that up here somewhere, I think. If you guys want to see a more in-depth treatment of marginalia and marginal notes, check that out. But I'll just give you a, a brief overview. Taking marginal notes actually helps you conceptualize the information that you're learning in the moment. Now, the amount of marginal notes that I take is gonna depend on the genre of book and the purpose that I'm reading. If it's just for fun, I may not take any marginal notes. If it's just a science fiction novel, yeah, maybe I'm just enjoying that. But I love collecting wise sayings in my pocket proverbs commonplace book. So usually I'm gonna at least have a pen or a highlighter in my hand to mark when I find aphorisms or proverbs, especially in science fiction. So like The Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio is a great example. There's not a whole ton of notes that I have, but I do mark out the proverbs and aphorisms that he uses because I want those for myself. I want to be able to share those to my kids. I want to be able to share them with you guys. I have a whole podcast on proverbs. So I am going to mark those because I don't want to miss out. Now I am starting a new YouTube channel on science fiction. It's called Truth Suffers. There might be a link in the description for you guys, but I'm going to be covering things like Dune Messiah, which is one of my favorite books. Frank Herbert really changed my philosophy around. So there's going to be a lot more marginal notes in this book. That's because I'm making one or two or three videos on this. So I really need to mark this up. This is my working copy of Dune Messiah. So if I'm reading a nonfiction book like Cal Newport's Slow Productivity, then I'm gonna be taking a lot more marginal notes because I have a specific purpose for reading this. I wanna make a YouTube video on this. I wanna make a blog post on this. I wanna share these ideas with you guys. And I wanna learn these ideas for myself so I can start practicing what he's preaching. I love Cal Newport. Everything he writes is gold. So I wanna make sure to mark up this book so I can come back to it time and time again in order to get the most out of this book. Cal's a great writer. He's super clear and concise. And thankfully he demarcates his definitions. They're really easy to find. So I'll highlight those, but I'm also gonna write some marginal notes in the margins for future Parker to come back and remember what I was thinking when I was reading this book. I also will block off quotes if I wanna add those to my commonplace books later, but it's important for me to mark up the text so I know where to find those quotes when I come back later. In my philosophy master's degree, one of my professors gave us a whole bunch of symbols that he uses when he marks up a text. I don't use all those symbols myself, but I'll put them up on the screen so you guys can see them. They're also in that video on marginal notes. The symbols that I mostly use are an eyeball if it's something that I need to go back and look at again, or maybe even commit to memory. I also use a square root symbol in order to indicate that this is like a key point this is the author's main point or key point or main thesis of the chapter or book. That's a really important thing. So if I see a square root, go back to that for sure. I'll also block off words that I really like or that were new to me, words that I had to look up. This helps me expand my vocabulary and that's actually gonna be another tool later on. So I'll come back to that. Now you may choose different symbols than I like. You may use highlighters or different color highlighters. I like yellow. You might choose to underline different things than I would. But my key point here is mark up your text. It will help you remember in the moment and it will help you remember this information and these concepts when you go back to read it a second third, fourth, fifth time. Now, I don't expect to master a book the first time I'm reading it, so my first pass is usually just me marking up the text for my second time through. The second time I can start to master these concepts. And I don't mean you have to read the book from cover to cover a second time, just when you're skimming back through, 
oh yeah, here's what he said. Oh, I remember that now. Oh, now it makes sense that I've read the third, fourth, fifth chapter. I also like to dog ear my pages. I know a lot of people are going to be mad about that, but these books are tools. I beat them up and make them mine. This is my tool. You probably wouldn't want to read it after me, but maybe my kids will like it and they'll see, oh, look at dad's marginal notes. That's kind of cool. Th this isn't just for show. This is something that I'm going to use to learn new concepts and convey them to you guys. But I'm going to make the most marginal notes in something like more precisely the math you need to do philosophy. This is me trying to acquire a new skill. I'm trying to learn about sets and all different types of mathematics that analytic philosophers use. I want to be a good analytic philosopher. I also want to be a sage. That's why I'm picking up all those proverbs, but I want to do philosophy well as an analytic philosopher. So I'm going to mark this book up a ton in order to help myself acquire new skills. So those are three different levels of marginal notes. If it's a book I'm reading more for enjoyment, I'm not going to mark it up that much. If I'm reading it in order to convey new ideas to you guys, I'm going to mark it up much more. And if I'm reading it for skill acquisition, I'm trying to acquire a new skill, that thing's going to get all chewed up, all marked up, because I'm going to have to return to that book often. But speaking of acquiring new skills, I want to talk about the sponsor for this video, Brilliant. If you guys have seen my videos before, then you know I love Brilliant, and that's because Brilliant is where you learn by doing. It has thousands of interactive lessons in math, data science, programming, and artificial intelligence. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. They have this first principles approach, which helps you build and understand from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that let you play with the concepts as you're learning them. This is a method proven to be six times more effective than merely watching lecture videos. Plus, all the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals. These are thinkers from places like MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Now, Brilliant helps you actually build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not just memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. Learning a little bit every day is one of the most important things you can do, both for personal and professional growth, and Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes a day. They have these fun lessons that you can do whenever you have time, which is literally the opposite of mindlessly scrolling and wasting your time. I've been taking a deep dive into the philosophy of artificial intelligence, and the philosophy side of things makes sense to me, but a lot of the computer science folks who talk about artificial intelligence use different words, use different concepts, and so I'm using Brilliant to help me understand where they're coming from. Courses like Thinking in Code, Creative Coding, Programming with Python, and How Large Language Models Work. And right now, my ParkNotes audience gets to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash parknotes, or you can just click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's get to the second tool to help you actually remember what you read. The second tool is a personal compendium. So for the folks who don't like annotations, who don't like making marginal notes, marginalia, this is for you. If you do like making marginal notes, this is also for you. It's a personal compendium. A compendium is just a collection of information. Usually it's systematically presented and it's usually comprehensive in scope. So think of a guidebook of North American turtles. That's going to be systematically presented probably by like turtle name or maybe by subregions in North America, and it's going to be comprehensive in scope. It's going to include all the turtles that live in North America. So that's an example of a compendium. You're going to make your own compendium for the books that you're reading. So if you don't like making marginal notes, make your notes in a separate notebook. This is going to be your encyclopedia, your index, and it's going to be where you store your information. So if you're reading a science fiction book or a fantasy book and you have a hard time remembering names, write the names in here. And you can even write their associations. This guy is king of this land. And he's got beef with this king. And he's married this queen. Whatever the case, if you want to remember the plot and you have a hard time with all the different politics going on, then write that in here. So I've been doing this for philosophy concepts like the simulation hypothesis. I have a compendium slash manuscript commonplace book for the simulation hypothesis. Don't laugh. Like a lot of people are interested in this. And I want to get to the deep philosophy behind this. I want to help people think about the simulation hypothesis. So as I read books and articles and watch TV shows and learn more and more about what people think about the simulation hypothesis, I abstract the ideas and the information out and I put it in my virtual reality simulation hypothesis compendium so I can actually remember what I've been learning. I also just started a new notebook for science fiction books. There are some books that I don't like marking up because they're too beautiful. They're too like rare. They're collectibles. So here I have The Lord of Light, and I don't want to mark this up. I love this book. I want to read it here. I'm going to be really nice to it. I'm not going to bend the corners or add any marginalia. 
but I'm going to take all of my notes in a separate notebook. So when I read a collectible book, I'm not destroying it. But if it's a modern book, I'm going to chew that thing up and make it my own. You may also include chapter summaries. So if it's a novel, maybe you summarize each chapter so you remember the plot as you're going. If it's a nonfiction book, maybe you summarize the key arguments, the key themes, the key information that were presented in the last chapter. Whatever the case, you make it your own. This is your personal compendium. I'm just giving you the idea. You make it your own and let me know in the comments what else needs to be included in your personal compendium to help you remember what you've been reading. Now let's get to tool number three. Tool number three is really simple. It's just a personal dictionary. This is just a notebook where I collect words. These are words that are some of my favorite words or words that I rediscovered or words that I learned for the first time. While I'm reading a book, if I come across a really good word, I will block that out. And then when I'm done reading the book, I go back through and I add those new words into my own personal dictionary. I'll look up the etymology of the word so I can see where it came from. I'll leave a definition or two. And a lot of times I'll also include the citation and the quotation. Here's where I found it and here's the context. This way I can actually recall the word from the book where I found it and it helps me remember that book. So here I have the word proleptic. I found this word in the Starmont Reader's Guide to Frank Herbert by David M. Miller. This is a really good book of essays on Frank Herbert's work. And he used this word proleptic, which is anticipating. So especially the describing of an event as taking place before it could have done so. The treating of a future event as if it had already happened, or the anticipating and answering of an argument before an opponent has had a chance to advance it. A derived form is prolepsis, and that comes from the Greek prolambano. That's going to help me remember proleptic and make it part of my own vocabulary. So create your own personal dictionary. Use the words that you find while reading books. The fourth tool for helping you actually remember what you've been reading is just a reading log. This is going to help you remember the titles of the books that you've been reading, and it'll help you remember when you were reading it. So keeping a reading log is pretty simple. I just come up with a daily page number goal. Here's what I want to achieve each day, and I try to reach that goal. There's a lot of different ways that you can come up with that goal. There are top-down approaches where you say, I want to read this many books. You add up the pages in all those books, and you divide them by 365. There you go. You get your daily page number goal. You can estimate instead if you don't know the exact page numbers for all the books you want to read. Or you can take a bottom-up approach and say, hey, I could probably read 10 or 15 pages a day, maybe 20, 25, and you make that your goal. You can also use time goals. Hey, I want to read an hour every day. I want to read two hours every day. I want to read 15 minutes. Or you can make chapter goals. I want to read one or two chapters every single day of whatever book I'm in. And I know if I continue to make progress like that, I'll end up reading a lot more books than I have been. So reading logs are a really simple way to keep track of what you've been reading, whether it's journal articles or papers or books or eBooks or comic books. You can write those down in your reading log and give yourself a date and you'll remember what you read and when. Also, when you're done with a month or a year or whatever metric you wanna use, you can write down all the books that you read during that time period. Then you can keep a running list of all the books you've been reading. So imagine doing that for like 10 years. You can have a huge list of all these books that you've read. That's really cool. That's really encouraging. You've read a lot. Look, you have the stats right here. So a reading log can help you remember what you've been reading and when. Okay, so tool number five is going to be a book of book reviews. You're going to keep a notebook just for your own reviews of the books that you've been reading. This will help you remember what you've read because you have a summary, your own summary, in your own handwriting, in a notebook dedicated to just that. This is a great idea. I came up with this. I love it. I came up with it because... I had been writing a bunch of praises for my philosophy master's degree. A praise is just a philosophical summary of someone's argument. You write a paper and you have to give a summary of it. What is the author saying? A straight praise is just that. It's a summary. But there's also mixed praises, which will have like two thirds just summary. And then one third will be your own philosophical analysis. Hey, what are some problems with this? Give some pushback. In my philosophy master's degree, I wrote a lot of mixed praises, but I kept them all in this notebook. I also use this for writing my philosophy papers. But I thought now that I'm graduated, I want to continue writing praises. So I'm going to keep a notebook just dedicated to those philosophical summaries. And I'll do it for my theology papers as well. I want to continue learning for the rest of my life, so I have a notebook dedicated to that. But then I thought, hey, I'm going to read a lot more than just philosophy books for the rest of my life. Let's start a notebook dedicated to just book reviews. So this idea gets me most excited. It doesn't take that much work, and you're not publishing this somewhere, so it doesn't have to be the most rigorous thing you've ever wrote in your whole life. You're just collecting your own thoughts on the book. What did it make you feel? What did it make you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What parts did you like? What parts did you not like? What are some key themes that you want to remember next time? Maybe you put a check for read again or an X for 
hey, I wish I didn't even finish it this time. I think this is probably the coolest tool on the whole list. It's a book of book reviews. For all the philosophy nerds out there, consider keeping your own book of praises as well. Just summaries of philosophical arguments. They really help you remember the arguments in the moment while you're writing them. And it's such a valuable tool that you can use later when you want to bone up on those arguments. So a book of praises and a book of book reviews. So next up, tool number six is keeping a commonplace book or keeping multiple commonplace books. I am obsessed with these. I love these. So commonplace books are just collections of quotes. You're collecting ideas, you're collecting wise statements, wise sayings, you're collecting things that you want to remember. So naturally, I had to include this on the list. This is literally made to help you remember what you've read. I've done a lot of videos on commonplace books, so if you're interested in learning more details and learning my own categories for commonplace books, check out the playlist. It might be up here. But real quick, let me break it down. You can have a general and a specific commonplace book. A general one will be hey, I just, I have this commonplace book and I put quotes from whatever I'm reading in here. These are my favorite quotes. I want to read them later. So I put them in here. You can also have a specific commonplace book. This is a notebook dedicated to quotes from one specific genre or one specific book series. So maybe it's like a Dune commonplace book. I actually have a Dune commonplace book. This is my orange Catholic Bible. That's what I call it. Dune fans will know why I call it that. But this is just four quotes from Dune. I love that book. I might stretch it out to include others if I don't collect enough, but I think I'm probably going to collect enough quotes in here to fill the whole thing up. So that's a specific commonplace book. It could be, like I said, a, a whole series. It could be a concept or an idea. I also have commonplace books on artificial intelligence. So when I'm reading up on artificial intelligence or the philosophy of artificial intelligence, I put key quotes from those readings into that specific book. Now, I also make a distinction between a treasury commonplace book and a manuscript commonplace book. A treasury commonplace book is just a collection of the quotes. You find good quotes and you put them in your notebook. A manuscript commonplace book will include the quote and your analysis of the quote or your thoughts or your commentary, your exegesis of those quotes. You're manuscripting out papers or blog posts or Facebook posts or Instagram posts. You're manuscripting out your ideas on these quotes. So you're going to include those in your commonplace book. I've been doing this for a long time. This is how I first got into commonplace books was through manuscript commonplace books. So you can mix and match those two categories. You can have a general treasury, a specific treasury, a general manuscript, and a specific manuscript commonplace book. So that's my analysis of commonplace books. If you want to learn more about that, check out this video up here and make sure to check out that playlist because I talk a lot about them. And then lastly, tool number seven is just practicing active recall. Usually you're going to do this with a friend or a family member or a spouse. This is just talking about the books that you've been reading. Hey, I just read this book. Can I tell you about it? I do this with my wife on walks all the time. Sometimes it's just an information download. The, the poor woman just has to kind of endure what I've been reading. Let me just tell you about it. Please, I have to get it out. If I can make it interesting for her, I really try to, but sometimes she's just not interested in like the metaphysics of personal identity. But this process of active recall will actually help you remember the stuff that you've been reading. You're thinking about what you just read, you're putting it in your own words, you're describing it for someone else in a way that hopefully they can understand, and hopefully that's interesting to them. This is like making that information part of who you are. It's making it yours. You're actively recalling it. You're not looking at your notes. You're saying, what did I just read? Oh yeah. And you're making the connections in your mind. And that's solidifying those ideas. So practice active recall. Maybe you join a book club or you go on a subreddit or I don't Instagram or, or some kind of social media and you find a group of people who are also reading that book. I have a Discord channel. You can check that out. I'm not super active, but I'm working on getting more active there. Join someone's Discord server and start talking about what you've been reading. Try to actively recall it instead of just looking at your notes or just looking at the book itself. This is one of the best tools to actually remember what you've been reading. All right, so that's it. There are seven tools to help you actually remember what you've been reading. I wanna hear from you guys. Which tool do you think is best? Leave me a comment. And if you think I need to add another tool to the list, please drop a comment. I'm always trying to learn. And I know lots of other people read the comments and benefit as well. If you guys made it this far into the video, then you are awesome. Leave me a book stack emoji so I know who the real ones are. And if you guys really like the work that I do here, then consider becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon patron. I have at least one exclusive video up there already. It's a read through of my pocket Proverbs commonplace book. 
I collect a bunch of wise sayings and I just read them to you. That's part one, but I'm going to continue this as a series. As I continue to add wise sayings, I will sporadically do another read through just to inundate you with more and more wise sayings. So go and check that out. You can become a YouTube member here or find the Patreon link in the description. And if you like this video, then make sure to leave me a like. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future tips and tricks for studying and philosophical meanderings. But that's going to have to do it for now. I'll catch you guys next time.